Hey guys, this is Phil from WonderCage.com. This is LG Class, their first full metal phone. Uh, the first design is actually okay, uh, at least on the front. It reminds me of the LG Arena that was launched, when was that, six, seven years ago? That was actually a good looking phone and it reminds me of that feature phone. Uh, that means the front is okay and especially that curved glass on the top is actually a very good plus side when you're trying to pull out the menu from the sidebars. That's actually very helpful and feels really nice. Uh, but the back key is one thing that I really don't like. It's really ugly on the back, especially the, the div divider on the top and the bottom that's both in plastic the, for antenna and other RF related things. But um, those actually break the balance and um, there's a slight curve there on top and that's another uh, balance breaker there. They're in plastic and the middle is in metal, so you see a little gap between there. It doesn't fit at all. So that's a little problem that I, you know, when you get a phone from LG, like a big company, you expect them to fit perfectly. Although this is a budget phone, it's not exactly that cheap because it's retailing at about 350 bucks in Korea. We expect the similar prices in the states, uh, stateside or the rest of the world too. And if that's coming with the Snapdragon 410 and 2GB of RAM and 720p display, we don't call it a budget phone anymore. So. With that price point, you expect a little better build quality there. And especially the back key. I'm not a big fan of the LG's back key at all, but I was getting used to it as LG was getting more balanced design towards their back keys. They were actually acceptable. The location wise, they were not my favorites, but designs wise, they were actually looking better. But what is that? That's protruding like, like as hard as it could. I know camera protruding a little, that's acceptable because that's like everywhere. But you don't have to make the keys to protrude at all. You know, it seems like I have to scrape this out like it, there's a gum on the, on the road. You know, it's, it looks really weird. And I often feel really weird when I'm trying to put my finger on it because it, I don't know, there's a little bump on it so I feel like I have to slip away. That's really weird point there. Not my favorites. Okay, the display wise, it's got thick bezels, uh, partially thick bezels, but that's okay. You know, it's a, it's a budget phone supposedly. So I guess that's okay. And color reproduction is very good, especially, uh, except for the red that actually kind of is wiped out a little. It looks fine on the, uh, on the camera, but it actually is not. So aside from that, 720p is okay resolution for five inches. We've seen a lot with the five inches and 720p. And since you're not gonna watch a VR on this, it seems totally fine and display is totally on par with the other devices. Uh, they fortunately included the ambient sensor there, which they exclude in almost all of their budget phones. So it's there, but it's kind of conservative in their way. So it gets a lot darker than what you would like, even if you customize it 200% to the auto. Uh, auto brightness so you will end up using the custom brightness a lot so but it's a good thing that it's there so um, and the call quality wise the LG's call quality was always been bad at least uh, when they're connected in Korean networks but um, this one is actually pretty Okay, that's a surprise because I didn't see a good call quality from their first metal phone, but they did it. It's kind of crisp there, it's kind of sharp, but if you're getting a phone with the um, HD voice enabled market, you'll be given an option to change the voice quality there to soft, so I guess that's not gonna be a big problem. The speaker is on the back, which is kind of surprised most of the full metal phones, including the iPhone and the Galaxies, put their speaker on the bottom. Uh, even when they put it on the back, they usually put it on the bottom back side of the phone, but they put it on top, which kind of came unha uh, unhandy because I happened to block the speaker with my finger, but um, I guess I can change my grip. And since there's a little bump there, there was a sudden uh, plus side to the speaker locating there because that was giving a little lift and it doesn't block the uh, sound of the speaker on the way out because it gives a little lift there. Uh, but the quality was really bad. It's the volume is small and uh, the overall quality sounds really smudged. So we don't suggest using the speakers on this guy that much. Now the camera, you can launch the camera by two fast clicks of the back button, which takes a bit of a time, but you can launch that. With 13 megapixels, we thought numbers can't really tell everything, but you know, it's 13 megapixels after all. So we thought it was it would be okay at least, but that turned out to be false. Uh, terribly. It takes terrible pictures even in daylight and in the lower lighting uh, positions it takes terrible pictures. Don't try taking the pictures. Details are all smudged out and um, it's really terribly hard to get the focus when, uh, when a room is a, just a little dark. 
and they were telling us that they got the GeForce front-facing camera. Don't expect anything on that. It doesn't really match to your expectation. It doesn't look anything like the GeForce front-facing camera. It just smudged. Like, it's not like a soft skin tone kind of smudge. It gets like way much smudge than you would like. Now, the performance-wise, it's a pretty expensive phone, but coming out of Snapdragon 410. We know of Snapdragon 410 is the capable processor, but LG has been doing, hasn't been doing a good job at it, especially LG Magna was a very terrible device with the terrible optimization. This one is a lot faster, whether you launch a phone or settings or just anything, probably anything is just going to launch fine and quick, uh, which is on par with the other devices, other well-optimized devices like the Motorola's, uh, and it looks good, and the heat management is actually pretty good. LG has been doing a terrible job at heat management, uh, that gives you even the screen brightness throttle, even with a little bit of heat, because it's generating so much of the heat inside anyway, but it doesn't do that anymore, so we'll call that a better optimized than most of the LG phones, and on par with Samsung and um, part of the Motorola phones even. The, uh, the software is actually just typical LG, it gets the little flat icons there, but it's missing out the LG's browser, that's been a, quite a lot, but um, LG's browser was one of my favorite softwares, so you can uh, swipe the screen with your two fingers to get to top or bottom, and you can capture long screens like the Galaxy Note 5 is advertising, they got rid of that and it's now replaced with Google Chrome, I don't know why they did that, but um, aside from that, there's really nothing to note there. Uh, the Q slide is still there, but I don't know, it supports two little apps, mostly built-in apps, and no other third-party apps, so I don't know why it's there, but it's there. I guess it's better to have something than nothing, but it's not very inspiring. Now the battery life-wise, it's, um, it's um, one of the LG's common known problems with their phones, that their battery stays too long on the 100%. And that's got fixed recently, but um, with this guy, it comes back. From 100 to 70, it lasts really, really long. And from 70, it falls like a skyfall, free fall. So that's a little problem there. But aside from that fact, as a 2050 milliamps battery, three hours and 40, uh, half, three and a half hours to four hours of the screen on time on my daily driver was totally fine. That was beyond our expectation, and we'll call that a little bit better than average. Now the conclusion wise, it's a 350 bucks phone and with 350 bucks you can get a lot better Chinese phone. Of course, it's an LG, but really do you count LG that much as a brand value? We're not really sure, because I don't know, if there's like a Foxconn manufacturer phone, if there's a Huawei phone, if there's a Lenovo phone, I don't know, if they offer a lot better specs than this guy does, I guess I'm gonna choose that. They're all, they come in full metal anyway. So I guess it's an okay phone. I'm not calling the phone itself bad. It's a usable, average, and actually pretty good looking on the front side phone. But with this back design, and with Snapdragon 410 processor and 720-bit display, I'm not really sure if you would wanna pay that much for an LG full metal smartphone. That's it, it's an okay phone, but not for that price. Eh. So that was LG Class. Uh, this is going to hit the US market pretty soon and the rest of the world. So we hope you enjoyed our video. Don't forget to subscribe as always. And we'll come back with the cool gadget reviews as well. I've been wearing a Gear S2 the whole time. But anyway, so we'll see you guys later. Bye.